Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe so you're not dead weight next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Nero from Devil May Cry, a kid who grew up without his dad around and is now desperate to get close to someone. That's not a metaphor, he's got a whip hand he uses to yoink people in. He could have just started a YouTube channel, that's what I did. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need the anti-yeet. We've done enough yeeting builds, it's time to yoink instead. Next, we'll get a sword that we can rev up like a motorcycle, then run people over with the motorcycle sword. Finally, we need a gun that we can use with one hand because the other is occupied in the tummy of the bad half of your dad. The worst half of your dad, both halves aren't great. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. This one's a little busy. Dexterity will be number one. You're fast, you don't wear heavy stuff, and you use ranged weapons. Dexterity is the way to go. Intelligence next. If you're hunting demons, it helps you to know what demons you're chasing. Wisdom after that, you need sharp senses so that the devils don't sneak up on you. Subtlety isn't really their thing, but compared to how over the top you are, they're like cinnamon and cookie dough. Follow that up with constitution. Getting hit by the denizens of hell doesn't tickle. Strength is a bit low. Nero is car throwing levels of strong, but we need other things more and we'll dump charisma. Nero has a lot of little brother energy. Nothing wrong with that. Unless you're an only child, then it's an issue. We made Dante a fallen Asimar, but you're not quite as demonic as he is. A few generations have gone by and the demon blood is running a little thinner. You're a Jimmy Buffett demon, a son of a son of a demon. So we'll go for custom lineage and scoop up the artificer initiate feat, letting you grab one cantrip from the artificer list like Thorn Whip, which is a melee spell attack that deals 1d6 piercing damage and pulls a creature 10 feet closer to you to get that melee combo started. You also get a first level spell like Cure Wounds, which heals 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier to a creature you touch, and you can touch yourself, which is how Sweet Surrender Arm is supposed to work. Dirty pun intended, actually. Good to know. Also, I don't think we're getting the Pasta Fork Arm, because that's just a fork. Actually, wait, no. You get Tool Proficiency from Artificer Initiate, so go for Cook's Tools, boom, Pasta Twirling Arm. I came up with that in the voiceover. Bump your dexterity with two free points, take Arcana for your skill of choice, and the Soldier background for Athletics and Intimidation proficiency. It takes a truly brave person to be snarky in the face of the abominations of hell. We'll kick things off as a fighter because you do have Fight Me energy. Grab Acrobatics and Perception for your skills of choice, helping you do backflips and spot secrets in the background. You get a Fighting Style, we'll go for Dueling to start, adding two to the damage of weapon attacks when you're holding the weapon one-handed, since we're actually going to want to use a short sword for now. The Red Queen is probably a long sword. We're actually going to get something to use a long sword with our dexterity modifier in a second. Speaking of second, second wind lets you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action. Technically, Sweet Surrender only heals you. You could maybe heal someone else with it, but I don't know if Kyrie would give you a pass for that. Speaking of second, again, second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in the same turn once per short rest. If you want to shoot someone, yoink them in, and stab them in the same round, we're going to need a lot of actions. And if you want to launch your foes into the air, you need some special moves. Third level fighters can grab that as a battle master, letting you use four superiority die, which are d8s on three maneuvers. Pushing attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature, pushing them 15 feet away from you. A liberal interpretation of that would be 15 feet up. But even if your DM doesn't go for that, he can add a d8 to the damage. Lunging attack lets you add five feet to the range of a melee attack and a d8 to the damage. You're gonna be seeing me spam the dash attack a lot in the background. I like the dash attack, it feels good. Sweeping attack lets you hit a creature with a melee attack within five feet of the first creature you hit, as long as your attack roll would hit the second creature, dealing your d8 superiority die in damage and covering a whole dang arena. Of course, you can also get a set of artisan's tools, and I'm sorry if you felt bamboozled by the cook supplies earlier. It was the only way to get a fork, but don't worry, here you are. You can get calligraphy. I was stressed about it too. We have so much in common. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Round up your dexterity and wisdom. There's no reason to have an odd number, but we will actually be able to use both of these scores in a second. Fifth level fighters can get combos going a little bit better thanks to extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action and up to four with an action surge or two after you yoink someone in with your whippy hand. That whippy hand is also dealing 2d6 damage now since cantrips scale with your total level. It's always good to grab an extra cantrip here and there. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, but we're grabbing a feat. We're going to grab the crossbow expert feat. I know it's a gun. I know the gunner feat exists, but I also don't know if your DM has guns in their settings. Just change that or anything else you want at home. I'm not your god. This lets you fire multiple shots with a crossbow in a single round. You can fire at someone within five feet of you and you can fire a shot as a bonus action with a hand crossbow, which is why 
I like this better. The gunner feat is basically the same thing for guns, but it raises your dexterity by one instead of the bonus action shot. I prefer the bonus action shot, especially since your weapon has to be one-handed anyway. Seventh level battle masters get to know their enemy. You can see an enemy's strength, dexterity, constitution, HP, AC, fighter levels, or total levels. You know if they're better, equal to, or worse than you, and get two pieces of information for each minute of study as the camera zooms in. Gives you a nice little intro for the new enemy. You also get another superiority die you can spend on two more maneuvers. Fainting attack lets you spend a bonus action to give yourself advantage on an attack roll, and add the superiority die to the damage to really charge up a gnarly hit. Trip attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature, knocking them prone if they fail. You can add the superiority die to the damage. That's going to be our last maneuver. Mix these up to make the combos you want to see in the world, but I'm not good at them, so I'm just going to spam dash attack. I have no shame. We're going to bounce over to Monk now, giving you martial arts, letting you make unarmed attacks with your dexterity modifier. They deal 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier in damage, and you can make one with a bonus action after you attack with a monk weapon or unarmed attack. A monk weapon is any simple melee weapon that isn't heavy or two-handed or a short sword. We're still going to use the short sword here. You can't use martial arts with armor on, but you can just wear a cool jacket, so thankfully monks get cool jacket defense. That makes your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're wearing a cool jacket. I know the graphics has unarmored defense, but that's a mistake. It is called cool jacket defense. The real reason we are here is for dedicated weapon from the second level of monk, letting you make any weapon you're proficient with that isn't heavy or special a monk weapon, so hand crossbow and longsword are options now, meaning you have a longsword that uses your dexterity modifier. Of course, you also get key points you can use to do cool devil stuff like step of the wind to dash or disengage as a bonus action and double your jump distance. If your DM does allow the pushing attack to send people up, you need to get some serious hops to get the air combo going. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action. If you get hit, that interrupts the combo. We're going for triple S here. Flurry of Blows will help you get that going faster, letting you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with a bonus action. You don't need hands to make a demon catch your hands. All monks also get to run a little faster thanks to cool jacket movement, boosting your speed by 10 feet. Again, the graphic says unarmored movement. It's a typo. I'm working on fixing it. I don't really know what's going on with my editing software today. All right, now that we've got our basic combos, we need to truly arm ourselves with some special arms, and the most special arms are all going to come from wizard. First level wizards can grab cantrips. Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 2d8 lightning damage to a creature and prevents them from taking reactions for a little lightning hand. Firebolt fires a ranged spell attack that deals 2d10 fire damage if you want to pretend you're a different Capcom character. Thunderclap forces a constitution saving throw on creatures within 5 feet of you, dealing 2d6 thunder damage to those that fail. It's a real tomboy move. Thunder Wave is the first level spell version of that, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet. You'll have to yoink them back in for a combo, but that shouldn't be an issue. Jump lets you do a little shockwave hop thing, tripling your jump distance for a minute. Catapult lets you shoot your arm forward, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures, dealing 3d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail. Who doesn't love a little rocket hand, right? We can still grab three more spells, but those are the only ones we need for the hand stuff, so we'll just grab extra buffs. Featherfall prevents up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage. No falling damage in Devil May Cry. Mage Armor makes your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor for eight hours, which is better than unarmored defense. I mean that it's 13 plus your dexterity modifier instead of your wisdom and dexterity modifier. We just don't have the ability scores to invest in your wisdom more. I am not saying you can stack these. Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Save your key points for dodging, you'll have plenty of ways to go fast. It's also important to note you can use your spell slots for cure wounds from Artificer Initiate. Don't be afraid to keep yourself alive. You also get Arcane Recovery, letting you recover a number of spell slots back on a short rest equal to half your wizard level. Basically, stop the van, pick up another hand from Nico. Second level wizards get to choose a school, but if you have a theme song that plays every time you fight, you might be a blade singer. This will give you performance proficiency for free, but more importantly, it lets you play Devil Trigger with a blade song. That boosts your movement speed by 10 feet, lets you add your intelligence modifier to your AC, you have advantage on acrobatics checks, and you can add your intelligence modifier to your concentration saves. Those were already better since we kicked things off as a fighter, meaning your proficiency bonus was already added. You can use an amount of these equal to your proficiency bonus per day, each one lasts for a minute. For this level spell, shield lets you add 5 to your AC as a reaction, again, getting hit drops the combo, that's no good. Long Strider lets you add another 10 feet of movement to your speed pair that with cool jacket movement and a blade song boom you got base movement of 60 feet that's basically haste 
Kind of. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Scorching Ray lets you fire three balls of fire that deal 2d6 fire damage each. You can point them all at different targets or just all in a straight line like some sort of mega man. Enhance ability lets you give a creature advantage on ability checks of a certain type. If you choose strength, you also double their carrying capacity. That's what I'm going to call the buster arm. There aren't a lot of ways to do grapple combos in D&D, but being able to lift 300 pounds should help. If you choose dexterity, that stops them from taking falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less and constitution will give them 2d6 damage temporary HP, but you have feather fall and you're not going to get hit, so just do strength. Whatever you choose, it lasts for an hour depending on your concentration, but just choose strength. Fourth level wizards get another ability score improvement. I think capping off the dexterity is still the best move. A lot of your best spells aren't going to use your modifier. Like magic weapon, which adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon for an hour and makes it magical in terms of overcoming resistances. If you have to break through some hard shelled demons, this might be the only way to rev your sword up enough to do it. Alter self lets you give yourself a natural weapon that deals 1d6 damage of a certain type choosing piercing lets you do that helter skelter claw thing but it's not really great that's not my favorite arm again some hands are better than others you can also use an underwater adaptation to breathe underwater or change your appearance those two aren't really in character though honestly i don't really like this spell don't really like using it don't really like using that arm but you can do it so here it is fifth level wizards can learn third level spells slow puts your enemies in rag time forcing wisdom saving throws on up to six creatures in a 40 foot cube failing that their movement speed is halved they have a negative two penalty to their ac and dexterity saving throws they can't use reactions and have to choose between an action or a bonus action on their turn if they try to cast a spell you roll a d20 on an 11 or higher the spell comes out next turn instead it lasts for a minute depending on your concentration but if you you'd rather make yourself better haste will double your movement speed add two to your ac give you advantage on dexterity saving throws and an extra action to dash disengage hide use an object or make one attack so two attacks with your round of bonus action attack of some kind and another attack and an action surge to yoink someone in with your whip arm all in the same turn that's triple s of course you can only be that cool for a minute depending on your concentration when it ends you have to take a round off of actions and reactions we're also going to scoop up the sword burst cantrip here forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures within five feet of you dealing 3d6 force damage to those that fail rawhide is a weird hand it's just like a big aoe whip thing around you i think this handles it pretty well six level blade singers get extra attack which doesn't stack with fire so it's useless right no blade singer extra attack lets you replace one of your attacks with a cantrip so you can add thorn whip thunderclap or firebolt into your combos every round if you want for this level spells we're gonna get defensive protection from energy gives a creature resistance to acid cold fire lightning or thunder damage for an hour depending on your concentration demons like fire at least they do in D D. counter spell lets you shut down spells of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spells level we should work on getting that intelligence modifier up actually seven level wizard can learn fourth level spells stone skin gives a creature resistance to bludgeoning piercing and slashing damage for an hour depending on their concentration this is just basic don't hit me juice or at least don't hit me as hard juice locate creature lets you find a creature either specifically or of a generic type within a thousand feet of you and what direction they're moving in for an hour helping you track down your dad's worst half that makes it sound like he's got a wife that's mean that's not what i'm saying it makes sense if you've played the game eight level wizards get another ability score improvement unfortunately our last one but we can use it for a plus three intelligence modifier it's not bad but it's certainly not ideal for a wizard for this level spell we'll actually dip back to the second level for knock to break a lock and make a giant kaboom sound it's not really sneaky but neither is blowing off a lock with a revolver the spell shatter could also shatter a lock but it forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail inorganic materials and creatures made of those have disadvantage on the saving throw so it's really good at putting a hole in the wall if you want to do that ninth level wizards get fifth level spells telekinesis lets you lift creatures or objects weighing a thousand pounds or less if it's a creature they can make an athletics check against your spell casting check to resist this is another way we're going to use the buster arm to grab demons that are a little too heavy for you to lift with enhance ability to know more about those demons and how much they weigh use legend lore to get information about a person place or thing of legendary renown the more you already know about it the more information you're going to get just roll an arcana check and remind your dm that you spent a fifth level slot it's not nothing make them play a heavy metal song and at least show you the demon name 10th level blade singers get a song of defense letting you shut down damage as a reaction by spending a spell slot you reduce the damage by five times the level of the slot you spend which could be a golden orb to keep you alive when you 
probably should die. For this level, spell skill empowerment lets you give a creature expertise in a skill they're already proficient with, doubling their proficiency bonus for that skill, which should let you do all the crazy bananas stuff you do in the cutscenes. Steel Wind Strike lets you do the combat version of the crazy bananas stuff you do in the cutscenes, attacking five creatures within 30 feet of you with a melee spell attack and dealing 60 10 force damage on a hit and ending up within five feet of one of those targets. It's basically an instant triple S combo. Our capstone is the 11th level of wizard for six level spells, and it's time to pull that devil trigger with Tensor's Transformation. This will give you 50 temporary HP, advantage on all attacks with weapons, an extra 2d12 force damage with each weapon attack, which does include your unarmed attacks and a bunch of stuff you already got from fighter. Now you can't cast spells while this is up, but obviously since all of your spells are coming from your special arm and you can only activate the devil trigger once you get your arm back, that makes sense. You also have to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw when the spell ends in 10 minutes or you drop concentration. Failing that, you're going to suffer a level of exhaustion, probably from all the particle effects you just saw. It can be kind of a lot to deal with, but if you'd rather not lose the ability to cast spells, hit your enemies with a bit of the good stuff using Sunbeam, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot line, dealing 68 radiant damage to those that fail and blinding them for a round. You can fire that beam every round for a minute, depending on your concentration, to go full Kamehameha on someone. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you have options. Extra attack, a cantrip as one of those attacks, bonus action attacks that can be martial arts or crossbow shots, and even haste if you want another action. You can really play Nero however you want to. You're also pretty hard to hit, with 21 using mage armor and blade singing, 23 if you're rocking haste, or up to 28 with a shield and all those other buffs. Finally, you're fast with mobility options to jump around or dash around with plenty of spells and non-spells buffing your movement that don't even require concentration. Oh, but concentration is going to be an issue. You might be good at concentrating, but you can still only have one concentration spell up at a time. You've also only got plus three intelligence, so some of your cantrips and spells might not be hitting as well as your sword or your gun. Finally, low charisma means you could have some trouble teaming up with your uncle, but that just means that you have to prove you're not dead weight and you can do the coolest combos with all your stuff to do that. Yoink people in, doink people up, and then kerpoink them back into hell. Just make sure you've got your favorite arm on, otherwise you could be taking an L instead of getting a V. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more